Suzuki has been producing large capacity sporty naked motorcycles since 1996 with the hugely popular Bandit which was available as a 600 and 1200 version and quickly became one of biking's true bargain motorcycles. In 2007 however Suzuki took things one step further with the B-King. This was a naked Hayabusa pushing out an insane for the time 180 brake horsepower all that with a comfortable riding position and motorway munching potential. It was the ZH2 of the noughties. Kind of sounds like a recipe for madness. However, sales were slow and the B-King production was halted in 2012. However, in 2015, due to the ever-growing popularity with the Supersport naked market, Suzuki released the all-new GSX S1000. The bike was a new design from the ground up using a dedicated frame and the iconic 2005 GSX R1000 motor which was all wrapped in some softly styled bodywork. It wasn't class leading, bikes like the Tuono and the KTM Super Duke had that crown, but it proved a very comfortable, easy to ride road machine, which could produce a very serious turn of speed when required. It was a great alternative to the Iconic Speed Triple and more sporty than Honda's CB1000R. Over the past six years, the GSX S hasn't changed a great deal with only a few slight revisions to the package, but, for 2021, Suzuki have unveiled the new, not all new, but the updated GSX S1000. But the question is, have they done enough? So this new GSX-S, what is it all about? Well, I've got all of the details in my little press release here. So let's just go through it a little bit. So for all those people who were really expecting a whole new reworked GSX-S rebuilt from the ground up, unfortunately, that's not happening. I'm a little bit disappointed as well. I was really hoping they were gonna use the new GSX-R engine with the VVT valve timing and, and build something completely new and exciting. Unfortunately, they haven't done that. What they've done, this, this is definitely a case of evolution, not revolution. I do hate that saying, but it's very fitting. Well, they've, they've gone the same route that they have done with the Hayabusa, whereby they've just fixed the things which needed fixing. <laughs> I need to fix this. It's my green screen. Get off me, Ed. I actually reviewed the GSX-S a couple of months ago, quite recently. I had it for a couple of weeks video at the top there and there's a couple of things I pointed out which could be improved on the machine and it seems Suzuki have taken all of those they must have been listening must have been watching the videos because they've taken all of those points and that's what they've done they've addressed the things which were broken so first of all let's talk about the styling of this bike now it's obviously a GSX-S it looks a bit different basically it seems like the front end of the machine has been updated it's got a stacked headlight it's also got new shrouds it's got mini wings it's also got a slightly different back end a bigger petrol tank what they've actually done they have actually changed every panel on the bike but it looks like quite similar to how it did before it's got a larger fuel tank now it now has a 19 liter fuel tank giving you a potential range of 194 miles that's adventure bike distance it's also got this like carbon fiber camo effect sort of plastic i guess it must be on the shrouds looks a little bit different it's, it's also available in that classic Suzuki triton blue and i think there's a couple of different color options i believe a uh, mm, uh, mm, uh. It's available in three colors, the Triton Blue, the classic MotoGP uh, blue color. It's also got what Zuki are calling a mechanical matte gray. I guess that must be a bit like that sort of primer gray you see some of the Audis in these days. And also a stealthy black. The rear of the bike actually looks, oh, this is ridiculous. Pack it in. What is going on here? I'm trying to do a professional video here. It may not have the GSX-R engine, but it's still got a GSX-R engine, just the 2005 version. But what they've done, they have reworked it, basically. It seems like the head cams, inlet, throttle bodies have all been tuned on it, including the exhaust. Now, this will be a bit of a Euro 5 exercise, obviously, to meet emissions on the bike, but it has given it a few more of the old BHPs. We're now up to 149 
horsepower. And I think the old bike was uh, 145-ish. I'll put it on the screen. Suzuki say the exhaust has been reworked, but it still sounds as glorious as the old machine. They've actually done some work on the airbox. They've removed some restrictors, some separators within the airbox to let the air flow through it more cleanly. So it's still got a very, very nice intake roar and a nice exhaust note. We'll see when we ride it. The bike does have some parts on the new GSXR. It may not have the engine, but it actually has the GSXR swinging arm. And I think this is, this is to make the whole bike handle a little bit better. It handled fine, but when it really pushed on, the suspension was a little bit soft. But well, they've addressed all that. It has KYB forks, but they've got different internals. It has a different rear shock, and it has the GSXR swinging arm, which I hope and that in combination will sharpen up the whole of the suspension on the bike because that was one of the things which i found let it down a little bit i said it was a good bike for nine and a half thousand pound incredible value but you'd maybe need to then spend a little bit on the suspension well they've addressed that and the suspension has been updated updated suspenders the electronics is where things have been seriously overhauled and that's what really showing its age on the bike so the electronics have been completely overhauled we've now got different rider modes whereas before we didn't have any different rider modes hopefully none of those are snatchy <laughs> but uh, Suzuki have done a lot of work on the throttle response so I really don't think they will be we have five levels of traction control including turning it off they haven't mentioned whether it's got any lift control the new Hayabusa had lift control. I'm hoping you can isolate anti-wheelie and lift control, no, anti-wheelie and traction control. They haven't mentioned that. Um, they have also haven't mentioned if the bike has an IMU. It never used to have an IMU. They haven't mentioned it's got an IMU. Can we assume that means it doesn't have an IMU? I don't know. If it's got a new electronics package, with all these different, well, it may have an IMU, I don't know, I haven't said. I'm hoping it has got an IMU, and I'm hoping you can isolate the lift control. If it hasn't got an IMU, you won't be able to, so uh, let's see. The other big thing it now has is a quick shift and a blipper, a standard, so quick shift and blipper, something which wasn't on the old bike, couldn't even be added to the old bike, so quick shift and blipper, a standard, and it has three rider modes, I think, an A to C rider modes, all delivering the same peak power, but just the sharpness of that throttle response is there. So you've now got a way to adjust the throttle response, which you didn't have on the old bike. I think it just had a single rider mode. It also has an updated LCD dash, no TFT, but an LCD dash. It says lifted from the GSXR, but it's not the GSXR one. It's, I'd say it's lifted from the Katana, if you ask me. It's a good dash. It displays everything you need, including like range, telemetry, outside air, temperature. There's all sorts of information on this dash. It's just a lot of it displayed at any one time. You, you need to know where to look on the dash to see the information you want. But it's, uh, it's a good dash. It's a good dash. It may not be a TFT. TFT is almost old hat now, but it is, it is only LCD, but it is sort of color if not a little bit Casio. So it is an evolution. They have updated the things which were wrong with the bike to bring it into 2021. I'm a little bit disappointed they haven't gone with the GSXR engine and built a whole new bike around a different frame with the GSXR engine. I guess that GSXR engine wouldn't fit in the existing frame, so it would have meant developing a whole new frame for the bike um, because it, obviously the, the GSXR frame wouldn't really have suited a naked machine. So. A little bit disappointing, but there is a huge great silver lining to the fact they've only done an update on this bike, and that is the price. The machine only costs £10,999 in the UK, so just under £11,000, which is incredible value for a bike which puts out 150 horsepower, quick shifter and blipper, all the latest electronics. So, I, I you know, that is almost middle middleweight money so to recap we have new styling we have an updated euro 5 compliant engine with a fatter and flatter torque curve is what suzuki say um, we have the new electronics package much more updated i hope with some uh launch not launch may have launch control but i hope with some lift control built into that quick shifter and a blipper now and selectable engine maps and traction control which it was missing before and a larger fuel tank and a wider set handlebar that is it in a nutshell basically all for 10,999 pounds which i think is incredible value 
So there we are, that is my first look video of the new GSXS. Massive thanks to Suzuki UK for trusting me with the embargo information before the general release so I could bring you this video. So really appreciated Suzuki UK, or Suzuki GB, should I say, for doing that. If you've enjoyed this video and you've not seen any of my videos before, please consider subscribing. Um, I do all sorts of test ride reviews. I've got Ducati Diavels in the garage that I'm going to be reviewing shortly, uh, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of bike motorcycle related content. So if you're not a subscriber, please consider ticking that bell and joining the fun. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Has it got lift control, a separate lift control? It hasn't said in this press release. I really hope it has. Not fly tape. I haven't got an issue with flies in here. That is to stick my green screen back up. Oh, hang on. We've got a green screen malfunction. It's all very high tech in here. It's all very high tech. Bit of, a, bit of masking tape. Sorry. Sure, I'm blaming you for that, Mavis. Yes, yes, Mavis. I know Suzuki have been making bikes before 1996. Jeez, Mavis, you should be taking care of the green screen. I've told you.